the Anycubic Photon M3 Plus. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, a few weeks back, Anycubic very kindly sent me their M3 Plus to review, something I was very flattered by as, I believe at the time, I was the first in the world to receive it. Now, if you're thinking it looks very similar to the Mono X6K, which I reviewed some weeks back now, you'd be right. Quite frankly, it seems like the same printer. It has a 6K, 9.25 inch monochrome screen, a large build volume, an impressive horizontal print resolution of 34 microns, a checkerboard laser engraved build plate, and the body size that is, you've guessed it, the same proportions as the Mono X6K. So what exactly is the point of the M3 Plus? Well, it does have a few more features, one of which was a personal first for me, and it involves this strange thing, and this bracket, and these hoses, and these alchemical looking rods. Have you guessed yet? We're talking automatic resin feeding. Oh yes, something previously only available on Formlabs printers thanks to their cartridge system and a feature that's only just been pipped to the post by the soon to be released Eligu Jupiter. But of course, the Jupiter is huge and the M3 is a much more comfortable size printer for the average printing enthusiast. Assembly is simple enough. However, these prongs presented me with a problem. They're touching and I'm not convinced they should be. So I took a little insulating sleeve from around an ordinary piece of electrical flex and added this to one of the prongs. Now they don't touch. This tray is interesting. The FEP is fairly opaque instead of completely clear. It will be interesting to see if this makes any difference. As the resin tray slides in, these prongs drop down into place. These detect the resin level, electrically I guess. Anycubic kindly provided me with a litre bottle of their Craftsman Grey resin, and you'll need this size to fit within this system. Apparently other resins should work, but might not too. I guess differing resins may have varying electrical resistance, making level detection tricky, so experimentation will be needed. The resin tray must be primed with a little resin before starting. The auto feed system only works during printing, so you'll need something in there to get things started. After that, Every five minutes, the system checks the resin level and trickles a little in. You can adjust the fill speed, but I'd encourage you to keep this slow. Resin printing is, after all, a fairly slow process. There's a little splashing here, but that doesn't seem to cause any issues. After an overnight run, this was what I awoke to. The resin tray hasn't overflowed, as it obviously shouldn't, but the resin level is way past the max level indicator. In fact, if I'd have been foolish enough to print right now, there would have been an overflow issue for sure, which meant I had to drain the resin tray before using the M3 again. I guess I could try and bend the prongs a little, getting them deeper into the tray and lowering the max level, but I don't like bending things that aren't meant to be bent. If there's a way of adjusting this, I personally couldn't see it. 
I expected to see a little grub screw mechanism or similar. Something that would give me a little manual control. But no. Unlike the Mono X6K, the M3 Plus comes with both Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity. It's great to see both internet connection options available here. The menu screen on the M3 Plus is a whopping 5 inches and it's beautifully clear. However, we've moved away from the tried and true Anycubic user interface. These large swipeable buttons are nice and clear, but as you get into the menus, the text becomes smaller. By the time you're looking for a print file, the text is tiny and quite tricky for my eyes. This seems crazy on a 5 inch screen and a little disappointing. The ZR moves smoothly and quietly on the sturdy and wide dual linear rails and printing is a little faster on the M3 Plus, maxing at 100mm an hour as opposed to 80mm an hour on the Mono X6K depending on your print settings, of course. Thanks to internet connectivity, the M3 also connects to any cubic cloud. Setup instructions are very easy to follow and connection is a much simpler affair than on the original Mono X with no steady text files needed. You'll need to download an app, which is available for both Android and iOS, then register as a user. Anycubic Cloud allows you to upload spliced files and then remotely print them via the app. You can connect a separately sourced camera so you can watch the prints in real time from any location. And you'll even get an analysis of the results. Unfortunately, I couldn't demonstrate its use as the finishing touches were still being added to the cloud as I was making this review. But at least you know it's coming and it's a feature that I can see being very useful to many. So how does the M3 Plus perform when printing? Once again, I turn to Titan Forge and their excellent Badland Orcs March release. These miniatures are packed with detail and are a great way to show off the M3's precision printing capabilities. So what are my thoughts on the M3 Plus? Well, I loved the Mono X6K, so for printing capabilities, I have to equally love and respect the M3. It is, after all, pretty much the same machine, albeit a little bit faster. The bigger screen is mostly a pleasure to use, but at this size, there's not really an excuse for tiny text. The cloud will make remote access and control a very versatile feature, especially as both Ethernet and Wi-Fi connectivity are available. So that just leaves the auto-feed system. Does it work? Well, yes, it works fine. I've used it on several prints and it hasn't let me down. I am concerned by the lack of adjustment to the leveling detection and I would like to see this addressed. I do like the auto feed system and it's a great feature to have, especially for long duration prints, but there is room for improvement. A system to heat the resin to 25 degrees Celsius or so would be a major bonus and maybe a small impeller or a vibrating mechanism could help keep the resin adequately stirred and ready for use. But maybe these features are for a future printer. Right now we have the M3 Plus and whilst I'm not sure its features and extras are required by everyone, I can imagine serious amateurs and professional printers getting satisfaction from the additional printing security the auto feed provides, as well as the remote monitoring benefits afforded by the cloud. In short, the Anycubic Photon M3 Plus is a positive step in the right direction and a constructive tool for those that are serious about their printing. So that's it for this video guys. Take care and thanks for watching.